Hey everyone, today we're going to show you how to put together a cheap and easy to assemble DIY anodizing setup. So let's get started. We begin with an aluminum piece which needs to be cleaned off very well. We cleaned it using a degreaser, followed by an ultrasonic bath. Our bath contained just water and some Dawn dish soap. If you don't have access to an ultrasonic bath, Windex alone works just fine. Alright, see you guys in 30 minutes when the bath is done. At this point, we attach a titanium wire with an aluminum bolt onto the aluminum piece. This will be used to pass the electric current, so we need to ensure a very good contact. Next, we chemically clean the surface of the aluminum by placing it in a solution of lye. We used pure sodium hydroxide dissolved in water, but your common lye will work just the same. You know that this is working if you see bubbles peeling off the aluminum piece just seconds after it's placed in the solution. Do this for about 3 minutes. Now we're ready for the magic, so let me quickly explain how it works. Our original aluminum part naturally has a very thin oxide layer on it. By placing our piece in the acid and running electricity through it, we're forcing the growth of these hexagonal nanotubules, which grow much taller, giving us a thicker aluminum oxide layer. This makes the part much more scratch resistant. Next, we place our part in a bath of dye, so when the dye is trapped inside these pockets, our piece comes out looking colored. Speaking of the acid bath, it heats up a lot when you run a current into it, so we placed our bucket of sulfuric acid inside a cooling water chamber. Then we dropped our cathode into a very dirty acid bath to conclude the acid preparation. CAUTION! Do not use acid if you have not been properly trained to do so, it's extremely dangerous. Now we remove our aluminum piece from the sodium hydroxide bath, we rinse it off with distilled water, and then we're ready to plunge it into the acid bath. Connect the negative lead of your power supply to the cathode, and the positive lead to the anode, or the piece that you're anodizing. In order to know what current and voltage to set up on our power supply, we're going to use the anodizing 720 rule. This rule takes into consideration the surface area of the part to be anodized, and then by configuring several other parameters, it's going to spit out what current and voltage we should use. So now we plug the values for both voltage and current into our power supply, as per the 720 rule. We also need to wait 60 minutes given the current and voltage we're using. While we wait, we set up our electromagnetic air pump, which is used to blow air into the water or acid and effectively be used to stir up the solutions. Similarly, we set up our red dye bath, which needs to be heated to 52 degrees Celsius. But don't worry, you don't have to remember these parameters. They're listed right on the bottles. Although instead of getting these expensive anodizing dyes, I have had great results with Rith clothing dye, which is substantially cheaper. We've hit the 60 minute mark and are ready to turn off the power supply. We then remove our aluminum part from the acid and rinse it well with distilled water. Now we move the part directly into the red dye bath. You know your anodizing went well if your part retains color after just seconds of being submerged. This is looking good, so let's leave it in for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes in the dye, the part has a beautiful red coat to it. Rinse it lightly with distilled water and place it in the boiling water bath. This will help to trap the dye in the pores by growing crystals of hydrated aluminum oxide, which seal the pore openings. And we're officially done! Our part is now coated with a hard sapphire layer and a beautiful ruby color. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out our other content found in the description below, and we'll see you next time.